conflict management skills. We are going to look at traditional versus interactional view of conflict. What is constructive conflict? What is destructive conflict? How do we manage conflict? According to Covet, conflict exists where and whenever there is discordancy of cognition or emotions within individuals or between individuals. Basically what it means where there is a disagreement. Cognition means your cognitive mental uh, state where you have discordance, where you are not agreeing, where you are not actually uh, having congruency. So discordancy means you are not in the same uh, pace, you are not actually in congruency, you are not agreeing. It arises in personal relationship, it arises in business, professional relationship, organization between groups and organization and between nations. World War I was between nations. World War II, the same thing. We don't know where World War Three will, but we have little, little wars. As you can see, the ladies there, those arise, personal relationships, whatever they are fighting for, but not very, very good. So we don't have to get to that. I know freshers, you'll come to college and you'll have what is called the freshman bash there might be some of this, but this is medieval. This is uh, for Zinjanthropas. This is for those who have not actually learned about conflict management skills. Let's look more about what conflict management is. There you go. There you go. Uh -huh. Conflict is not necessarily bad or good, all right? But it is inevitable. Conflict is not necessarily bad or good, but you cannot avoid it. I think that's what the word means. Since it is both inevitable and dominant part of organizational life, managers must understand how to deal with it. You're also coming to college, you're going to have conflicts, especially in case of in the where to sit, where to take your food. You'll find that you have your dorm room, you might not understand each other, you might have conflict. Sometimes where they put their socks, or how they brush, how they sleep, how they do their stuff but we don't have to fight this is why we are learning conflict management how do you manage conflict when you don't agree with somebody do you have to fight no you don't have to fight okay conflict is not simply something visited upon us by a random or capricious environment so it just doesn't happen there's a root cause for it and you must see it coming with your roommate you must see it coming Maybe you've told him again and again and again, hey, when you come, make sure your shoes which are stinking, you place them outside there and he doesn't actually get it or she doesn't get it. Hey, when you come, please, your visitors should not sit on my bed. And all the time, all the time, she's not getting it. So it doesn't come from anywhere, right? Conflict is at the root of social and personal change. That's why we don't like change. Some of us really want face-to-face -face classroom. We don't want to change that we are now going online. There's a group that even is saying, hey, uh, we want, uh, we've never seen uh, Dr. Mjomba. How do I, how, why don't you just take what is coming? I mean, they just want to remain the same, but this is where the conflict is. You know, we have conflict now right there because they want me to be uh, online or they want me to go live, whatever they mean, and I can't. So personal change. Let's be ready for change. The only thing that is there is constant. You'll have less conflict. You'll have less conflict if you can take change, okay? It's a natural outgrowth of interactions with others. Conflict fulfills a function, so it's not for nothing, which means that conflict may be to bring about positive change also. But if conflict is mismanaged, the opposite occur. So remember, conflict is also positive. It brings change. You grow. I don't now do the things I used to do. There are times I really used to like, every day I come out, I have to go visit Boy Town. Now I don't feel like, right? But that can bring conflict for people who are not used to that the change. Be able to age gracefully. Right now I'm aging gracefully, so to speak. I have to know I'm becoming old. I can't do the things that I used to do earlier. That can bring conflict, though, if you don't take it positively. Change. Change brings conflict. Let us know about that. So it doesn't come from nowhere. Conflict that doesn't arise from nowhere. It has a root and you have to be see it coming. There is 
what is conflict that is the big q what is conflict conflict may be defined as a disagreement or struggle between people with one opposing ideas two opposing needs beliefs value or goals and not most people are afraid of conflict because it makes them feel uncomfortable or insecure the people who are in a relationship and they don't want they say well we don't have any conflicts oh we live happily ever after that's a lie either one person is not expressing themselves or both of them are cheating each other right there has to be you know you don't have to fight but you have to have conflict and resolve it that's the only way you grow okay because if you don't have conflicts then basically what it means is one party is either being too submissive one party is having their rights actually being uh, undermined or there must be something i mean we are different like even in a marriage when you hear some people say oh you know we are saved and uh, me and my wife we never fight that's very dangerous that's not real that's not actually natural that's unnatural okay so these people they try to avoid conflict at all cost and that might not be the way to go because they'll be laughing but somebody might actually be hurting it's good to release it's good to know you know because people change when i started with my wife i had some habits that were not good i'll come in and throw my shoes everywhere but then i had to be told and i changed i used to leave my bed without being made now i make my bed i used to leave her to only wash the things alone now i even wash things i even cook for her this, the conflict brings change and i like the change because i've grown if she's gone i'm not gonna be hungry i'm gonna be cooking other individuals want to avoid conflict with people whom they negotiate for example a boss a spouse a close friend because they are afraid that endangers their relationship with that person if you manage it well then i mean if you want a raise from your boss if you are afraid of engaging in a conflict you won't get that raise if you find something that's not right your spouse it keeps coming later and later and later and you don't engage in a conflict to negotiate and understand and tell him or her you don't like it then remember you're actually going to make your relationship very one-sided it's not going to be a healthy relationship so don't be afraid of conflict if you're one of those who are insecure and comfortable with it get over it conflict is not necessarily bad or good but it's inevitable it's about growth don't be afraid to negotiate with your boss or a spouse it helps makes you grow okay while these concerns are very realistic it's important to understand conflict is unavoidable i've said that again why is it unavoidable we live in a social world we are interdependent and in that interdependence we have aspects of things that we do we share scarce resources you come to TTU, you'll find that the desks are not enough. So you have to keep running around sharing those desks. When you go to the community computer lab, the, the computers are not enough. When you go to the dining hall, you might find that sometimes the food might not be sharing scarce resources. So we have to know how to manage conflict. You've heard about pastoralist uh, fighting because the grass is not enough. But you have to know how to resolve that. You don't have to kill each other. Coordinating actions, you might want somebody to help in one action and he's not pulling their uh, sock like in the groups. I hear people saying, hey, this group pass this person is not really actually working enough. This person does not even participate. You need that person to coordinate. And if he's not coordinating, he's not working, then there's conflict right there. Impatible, incompatible goals. You want to go by matatu, somebody wants to go by bus. You want to go by bicycle, one want to go by motorbike. You want to eat gideri, somebody wants to eat chapati. Incompatible goals. Engaging in give and take, that's a social change theory. We always time give. Somebody feels like I'm giving too much. Your friend always wants you to go to their room, but they never come to their room. Your friend always wants you to take him or her wherever they want, but they never volunteer. Your friend wants to borrow money all the time but they never give you money give and take so conflict will definitely occur you just got to understand you cannot avoid it don't try to avoid it even try to court it and see what you do one 
if we truly fear con fear of conflict if we truly fear conflict we will probably either avoid taking any position and not get what we want okay or we will take an arbitrary and probably unrealistic unrealistic position and still not get what we want okay you'll be a marginalized group you'll be a disadvantaged group you'll be a group that does not fight for its rights so don't fear conflict do not fear conflict but do not bring conflict for the sake no understand what we are saying here secondly negotiation does not have to be a hostile bloody or psychologically intimidating process to be successful remember conflict is the antecedent of negotiation or you negotiate because there's a conflict hey i want us to go to matate by this matatu no i don't like matatus they're driven too fast can we take a bro pro box that's a you have to negotiate there hey today i don't want to eat chapatis i think we've eaten them too much i also don't want to eat any uh ugali okay so why let's negotiate what will you so conflict brings about negotiation but negotiation does not have to be fighting no and that's why you're in college some of you write very nasty words on that wall and you don't know how to negotiate but it's fine but now you're understanding if you want to get something learn how to negotiate learn how to actually persuade somebody to get to your side don't think that because it's your right then you just have to say it any which way no okay in fact if it is if it is any of these it is likely to be highly unsuccessful uh, if it's hostile if it's bloody psychologically intimidating that negotiation is not gonna work you want conflict managed very well as a matter of fact conflict is the antecedent of negotiation i've told you you know there has to be a conflict for negotiation to happen and we'll look at negotiation in the next lecture so that you actually segue in from conflict management to negotiation traditional view of conflict there are two views of conflict traditional view of conflict and there is the interactional or interactionist view of conflict let's look at the traditional traditional view of conflict is that it is bad we view conflict as that it is bad and it should be avoided this general approach to conflict fosters both avoidance and competitive behaviors in interaction this is the view that most people learn unconsciously and it is a view that causes anxiety about negotiation and fosters avoidant negotiation style this is what i've been talking about where people avoid conflict they'll keep quiet they'll say mimi sina maneno ah mimi sitaki maneno mimi wasipigani mimi hataspendi kubishana rubbish bulldogish baloney this world is about fighting for your rights but learn how to fight for them learn how to negotiate so that traditional view is not what you should take now you've come to college learn what you need to do right how is it taught as a child we are taught and warned that conflict is bad and must be avoided using phrases as kuampole na usibishane kuampole na usibishane don't argue be nice another way you are taught is usianze vita wewe we tunajua unapenda vita usianze vita don't start a fight right there you are being uh, trained not to actually negotiate or not to get into any conflict okay others that are used kwa mstarabu na ujue kuishi vizuri na watu lakini sio kufinyiliwa okay some people are just doormats you know everybody can walk around them but it doesn't mean also you be a superwoman or superman who actually fights all the time there are some battles that you fight some you don't but do not let everybody trample on you okay lastly nyamaza na usiseme chochote kibaya you've had those i guess all right i've brought them so that when you start telling your kids as well remember you're telling them conflict is bad they should keep quiet there are people in a house where the father comes the mother and all the kids they scurry away into the bedroom they are under the uh, bed they cannot even ask anything to the, about with the father they can't discuss they're being taught right there conflict is bad don't even try to argue uh, and the, the the father behaves as if he's a wounded lion or a wounded bull but that's stupid that's bulldogish that's really old man 
uh, way to behave, all right? Conflict is inevitable. Conflict is part of life, all right? So we've looked at the traditional, the interactionist view of conflict. This is the communication perspective. From a communication perspective, which is also referred to as the interactionist view, conflict is inevitable and that maintaining and managing a certain degree of it can actually be helpful right the communication approach puts emphasis on embracing conflict rather than avoiding it this school of thought views conflict as a positive force except when misdiagnosed and mismanaged some examples of positive effects from conflict include multiple views you want to hear this person you want to hear this person you want to hear this person that's why in class we say okay what do you think mark bengele what do you think mark manga what do you think Mekira? What do you think you, uh, Madumblehu? You're getting different. They are conflicting, but doesn't mean that they have to fight and kill each other. No, you're getting different views. You get more informed. Dictatorships starts when people cannot actually take uh, conflict positively. Just neighbors here, Yoweri Kagutam Seveni, Bobby Wine is being fought because He's trying to say, hey, 36 years, when I was born, I saw you. My kids now have been born, and they're just knowing President Yoweriko Gutam Seven is the president of Uganda. They've just got tired. I mean, yeah, but Kaguta um, Seven does not actually have this communication perspective that, hey, let's see, what are they really wanting? How can I take their views? How can I shape my presidents to take them in? Or maybe it's time for me to leave, all right? So multiple views, diversity in all respects, cohesion, creativity. That's brought by those because if, if I can, I know you are hearing me. If I know that you are taking in my view, Seven is not doing that for Bobby Wine. The young in Uganda are tired, even the old are tired. Then you see what you can see. Uganda is not peculiar this has happened everywhere it's there bosnia it's there in belarus it's there when they talk about white lives matter okay so conflict be ready to court conflict be ready to actually embrace conflict but just know how to manage it that's very important according to lulofs conflict may be constructive or destructive similarly conflict approach may be constructive or destructive let's look at them Destructive conflict. Destructive approach to conflict occurs when there is no de-escalation. Even in the face of other options. It is characterized by the following. Escalation. People are fighting. De-escalation is... Okay, okay, okay. You cool down. You're actually going uh, down. But escalation is... Ju, ju, if you had seen Moi time also, we used to say, eh, nyayo, nyayo, ju, 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 that's just escalation, right? Tendency to escalate the conflict. You've heard how people start. They don't even know at the end, they're fighting, they don't even know what. It might have been a very simple, stupid thing. So destructive, there's escalation, overt power, people want to show their power. Eh? Me nani, eh? Eh? It's me, eh? you know me, do you know who I am, do you know my family, okay? and dissatisfaction at the end of it people are dirty they have fought they have called each other names so there is dissatisfaction you don't want to be getting into a destructive conflict loop you want to avoid that when you come to college you want to find a way of how you can solve your conflicts in a constructive manner okay let's see how it is one flexibility in what you expect of others and appreciating it is important will come here some of us will come with the village mentality they'll say this ethnic group is like this this ethnic. that is village mentality there's nobody who behaves like their village their ethnic group it is your perspective towards them everybody is unique we are fearfully and wonderfully made but if you hang around with your village mates you'll always be looking at people also from the lens of a villager and you'll be seeing them so be flexible be able to appreciate everybody then be able to discuss and negotiate so that you don't get into construct you don't get into destructive conflict but constructive conflict okay all right 
it's a win-win situation key to productive conflict management is the belief that all parties involved can achieve the other aspect is balance productive conflict is characterized by a balance between competitiveness and cooperation even in life balance is very important cooperation aids in the creation of an open atmosphere and exchange of information right so you want to balance make sure you actually involve listen to all parties find the differences with the parties and get to you know take both sides in life if there's anything you need balance don't over hard work too hard don't work too little don't overeat chapatis don't overeat uh, chips don't under eat you need some healthy food and finally constructive you have satisfaction the final outcome is that the partners feel they have participated in making a decision that affects them they feel satisfied with the results because they've each actually participated they've actually been part of the conflict so resolving the conflict okay what are the functions of conflict may help people find boundaries of their relationship with others or they might mark the termination of an existing relationship you can read the story about lisa and nathan but what it means is yeah you can say man you're getting into my privacy man i don't like you when you look inside my box man remember we are just here in college to pursue a degree every other thing these are my boundaries okay don't sleep on my bed don't use my shirt don't use my toothbrush it's, the conflict will help you to set those boundaries and they're very important if you have a relationship which has no boundaries somebody puts on your clothes somebody can put on your shoes anytime somebody can actually sleep on your bed then that's not a relationship that's a very poor relationship but conflict helps you tell hey man there you're crossing the line and you got to be strong to make sure you can do that okay conflict from an external source may strengthen the cohesiveness of a group or people working together or it may destroy a group's ability to think clearly and adapt productivity to the situation for example i'm giving you challenges i might be the conflict telling you i need this assignment on time it can bring you together to work very hard or you might crumble I see groups some of them are crumbling david and goliath david uh or the philistine really helped the israelites to come together in a cohesive group when you find uh there is war between families it can bring families very much together even brothers and sisters who never were talking can bring them together conflicts within a working group may help the group the group clarify its goals and desire or it might tear the group apart why are we here even your conflicts in your group as you are doing my assignment you should ask yourself what are, why are we what is it for okay that can help do that can help clarify you come to college and you start fighting maybe about a lady and you have to clarify your goals am i here to about ladies or to study am i here actually to make myself better you might have a fight with a lecturer and you might want to ask am i here to fight the lecturer am i here to fight the administration okay so conflict can help you clarify goals conflict facilitates the reconciliation of people's legitimate interests or it might keep them apart all right i want you to read this carefully when you're going through the video read them and see what conflict so conflict has got a purpose okay conflict is not just something bad okay finally at a personal level the experience of conflict builds empathy because people begin to understand the feelings experienced by others in similar situation when you're explaining a problem you're experiencing and you listen your listener says gosh i know just how you feel it is less irritating if that person had similar circumstances all right so conflicts helps you to go through an experience it helps you to understand especially uh in life if you're a battered wife right that conflict where you are fighting with your husband all the time and you can really make a good counselor letter because you know what it means to be battered if you are one that has actually been discriminated at the workplace and you feel there was all the time people were conflict with you you can understand and explain to it so that's what basically it means okay?
managing conflict how do we manage conflict and here we use the systems theory what is the system theory while it is not necessary to master the field of system theory you will increase your effectiveness by developing a systems approach and perspective to conflict diagnosis and negotiation strategizing what con system means is things are connected okay think of a system for example a car a car has got a carburetor a car has got a gas tank a car has got a you know clutch all those are systems that work together for a car to move a conflict does not just arise from nowhere there's a number of things that work there's a number of factors working together that's a system and that system brings about the conflict okay maybe there is one person who actually said something and that went to somebody else and that person added another word and then that other person was angry had borrowed you some things or had lent you some things comes and takes that's a whole system right so just understand a conflict to understand conflict you get to think in terms of system a theory theory is something that explains a phenomena theory helps us to predict something a theory is in social science a law in physical sciences like the law of gravity helps us to understand if you throw something up it tells you definitely it will come down there's no way you can fly if you want to really test the law of gravity go up the building and say all right i think i can fly i know i can. you'll lie to yourself because the law of gravity tells us that you'll fall down and you'll break into pieces that's what also in social sciences we have theories that help us to understand phenomena they help us understand the world they make sense of what is happening so communication system theory holds that systems are open and that in fact a call a closed system will ultimately cease to exist. when it comes to a conflict systems are comprised of subsystem or sub parts and there's a dynamic interaction between and among parts as well as internal i've told you about that think of a car there is a carburetor there is a, you know uh, all those parts even a human being like you know the alimentary uh, system the blood system those are systems right they work together so for our purposes here system thinking is most important system thinking may be described as a theoretical perspective that recognizes parts sub parts sub system and so on and so on all right but when it comes then to the uh, conflict i've talked about that you can read the rest about really explaining about system theory and system thinking about things are interconnected their parts their sub parts and all these work together right so a system approach includes an analysis of cause and effect relationship but does not assume that the whole is equal to the sum of its parts i want to make this simple to you okay when it comes to a conflict remember there is very many sub parts to the conflict it just doesn't happen within one part and <clears throat> so to solve a conflict you need to think in the system what started it how is it connected to the other sub parts how is this making the whole how do i solve it by uh, making sure i take care of all those parts you have to have a wider perspective of a conflict you don't even have to quickly solve a conflict you've got to look at the root cause of a conflict that's why conflict to really solve them you need to go deeper you need to actually look at all its sub parts you go to how are they connected what is the underlying dynamics what you are seeing remember even in a conflict when you see people shouting at each other that's not really the cause of the conflict they might be shouting at each other because earlier on maybe they were not even talking because somebody stole somebody's husband somebody stole somebody's money somebody kept uh, increasing their land acreage all right so read about the system theory much more and understand okay managing conflict here it says therefore our view and analysis of conflict directly and affects negotiation approach and strategy how do you solve that conflict it depends on how you approach it but if you approach it from a system perspective if you look at it as this thing has got very many sub parts this thing has got or this uh, shouting i'm seeing right now is a culmination of a number of events and mini events and so on 
Look at when people, two people are fighting, they'll tell you, this person has really been joking with me for a long time. He did this, he did that, she did this, she did that. You need to connect all that and see how, how did it pile up? How did it come up to this particular point? That's when you can solve the conflict. But just telling them, stop fighting, stop fi Okay, they can, but that might not stop the conflict. That's just a lull. But you need to actually go inside. You need to find out what is the root cause. This is why we're talking about the system. System. It's interconnected, right? So before it's possible to develop an effective negotia negotiation strategy, it is necessary to correctly diagnose the conflict. It's necessary to understand the conflict, the causes. Where does it start? Before it is possible to correctly diagnose the conflict, it is necessary that we recognize our predisposition, our feelings, our perspective for dealing with conflict, right? How do we view conflict? Do we see it as bad? Do we see it as a nuisance? Do we see it as something to be avoided? Armed with self-knowledge and basic conflict assessment tools, we may proceed to develop personal strategies that work to solve the right problem. So, do not jump into conclusion. Do not want to solve a conflict by what you are seeing manifested. When people are exchanging blows, it has grown. That must have been a toddler from maybe a year ago or three months ago or two weeks ago. It just doesn't explode at once. There's no way you meet somebody and say, Ntakubunda, from where does it? No. There is a genesis. There is an origin. And there are many parts connected. So as you get to college and as you grow in life, do not jump into conclusion about a conflict. We've talked about, especially read this page more, how do you view the conflict? How do I diagnose the conflict? The undercurrents, the, you get to look at uh, what are the parts and the subparts to be able to effectively negotiate and solve that conflict. Managing conflict may be approached in a compromising or a collaborative style, but it must entail a positive attitude and view. Read that again and again. Understand that. See, this guy is not caning that kid. Many parents want chapa, eh? Chapa, simbo, chapa, simbo, chapa. This, this, that's, that's, that's a caveman, you know. Because what you're trying to do is you don't want you don't want to do the hard work. You don't want to actually go into the root cause. You don't want to take time. Remember, conflicts will be part of your life. You need to all the time keep working them, working them, working them. Don't look for a shortcut. The problem is we want a shortcut. Some people will tell you, I want to solve this problem once and for all. Lies, rubbish, bulldogash, baloney. You'll hear some CSs, especially those who think they are actually uh, very effective. They'll say, I want to solve this problem once and for all. The only way to solve it once and for all, then make sure either you are dead so that you don't see it, or you kill everybody. But conflict is part and parcel of us. All we need to do is take a positive attitude and view about conflict, get to know where it is started, see strategies of going about it. Some conflicts might take years to solve. The Middle East conflict been there since time immemorial. The Israelites and the Palestinians are still fighting. Ethiopia right now, the Tigrays and the other groups are fighting. Sudan has been fighting. And I'm not saying that it can be solved, but maybe people are not diagnosing the conflict effectively. The Pokots and the Marakwets are always fighting, cattle wrestling. And I think maybe the problem is they don't take a communication perspective that this problem will persist but we have to find the root cause first we have to see what we can do about those maybe solve about the issues about scarce grazing lands make sure each gets water educate them about cows might not be the best thing now maybe try to find education and so on so best overall goal and strategy focus on interdependence rather than power over others mutual empathy and communication and potential constructive effects. That's the way to go. In summary, handled properly, conflict can strengthen relationships, help groups and organizations to reevaluate, clarify goals and mission, and can also initiate social change to eliminate 
inequities and injustice. These advantages suggest that conflict is normal and they underscore the importance of understanding and handling conflict properly. So, my dear students, your perspective about conflict. Conflict doesn't mean fighting. Conflict doesn't mean the babu or win away. You take your gun and shoot the DJ. That's not solving conflict. In fact, that's a very crude way. Conflict doesn't mean abusing somebody. Conflict means getting a strategy of how do I solve this. And that might mean going back to the books, going back to research, and finding out what is the root cause? What really has brought about this? Where did it start? What is the history of this conflict? Is what I'm seeing the real cause? Or these are just manifestation? A volcano, when you see that the magma is coming out, that's not really the cause of the conflict. The conflict is down there, tectonic plates are moving, there is a lot of force, there is a hot uh, magma trying to come out. So the volcano is a manifestation. The same way with a conflict, people are boiling inside, the stomach or the guts are burning. They're just having emotions are running. When they start shouting at each other, that's a volcano that has exploded. Hot magma, hot magma is coming out. So when you start just saying, stop, stop, all right, they can stop. But they might not actually solve the conflict. You need to sit down, work through, where did it start? Where is the bile coming from? How come you're spewing it out? What do we do about it? What measures? And that's what is called mediation. You can hear about negotiation and conflict mediation, conflict management. Those terms come there. And you need to learn. You've got the skills and we've hardly touched about it anyway. All you actually have to understand, I'm giving you the tips, but communication skill is wide. Communication skill is for life. Communication skill is not a natural ability. You've got to practice. You've got to dig deeper also about how to solve conflicts. There are people who are actually international uh, conflict mediators. Uh, those who are actually arbitrators, who actually solve and actually arbitrate. Okay, this goes there and this goes there. Mediation is where you let them solve it. You're just there, a neutral party, third party working it. It's also a job that you might want to go into. So you might be studying what you're studying. Remember, there's so many other jobs in communication that you can do. If only you actually study and research about. Because communication is 80-90% of the world. right? You run the world through communication. International mediators, ambassadors are mediators. They need great communication, great public relations. All right. All right. That's the end of that lecture. The next lecture, B, we'll be looking at uh, negotiation. As uh, we've said, conflict is the antecedent of negotiation. Bye for now.